Well, it's 55 days to the 2024 presidential and parliamentary elections. Good afternoon. My name is Sweetie Abochi and welcome to Join This Room, your home of independent, fearless and credible journalism. Coming up, NDC flag bearer John Dramani Mahama challenges Dr. Mahmoud Balmia to address school furniture shortage. Over one million students, as he says, the vice president who previously criticized the government from the opposition now appears to be ignoring the issue. Today, 1.3 million basic school children in Ghana have no furniture to donate that furniture. He can take it from the budget and buy furniture for those children. Why is he not doing so? And we'll take you live to the Upper West region where he is on the second day of his tour of the region. And also coming up, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research predicts that it could take 300 years for Ghana to restore the quality of soil devastated by Galamse. And the calculation shows if you want to get to the pristine condition, the calculation shows something like more than 300 years. More than 300 years. Let's start now with the details. Council of Scientific and Industrial Research is predicting that it could take 300 years to restore the quality of soil devastated by illegal mining activities. Unapproved chemicals and heavy metals used in illegal mining have contaminated many farmlands across the country. Speaking on Current Affairs program News File, research scientist at CSIR Soil Research Institute, Dr. Albert Corbina Mensa, explained that the situation might worsen if steps are not taken to tackle the severe environmental damage caused by Galamse. As a matter of fact, um, there's a calculation that some of us have done, and we, we wanted to see how many years it would take for, let's say, uh, uh, for the soil to, to sort of restore to its natural state. And we were trying to do some plant, which, which the process is called phytoremediation, to see how it is going to remediate the, the chemicals from the, from, from the soil. And the calculation shows, if you want to get to the pristine condition, the calculation shows something like more than 300 years. More than 300 years. Hmm. So as a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, when it comes to remediation or when it comes to um, restoration of a debated mining site, we can, we can, we can stop, we can reclaim to, uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, a state that it can be used in another form. But for us to return the land to the its original state, it, it, is, it is very um, dicey. It's very dicey. So it, it's something that we, we, may, we may have to take into consideration. But of okay. course, we Go can return the land to forestry. Mm. Go, go, go ahead and share your go, go, go ahead and share your your, your research uh, results with us because um, we're hearing from you to take 300 years. We have heard from another um, expert who was who was suggesting 40, 50 or so. But let's keep that conversation going. Let's go straight to what your research reveals, what it is that we are confronted with. So. Um uh, 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 I have worked on mine tailings that are actually abandoned from the artisanal small scale mining. And I have also worked on, on mine tailings from artisanal small scale mining sites that have been used to, to grow um, lettuce. Um, but before I go on, um, let us take a look at heavy metals. Heavy metals are categorized into two the essential heavy metal and non essential heavy metal. Now, the essential heavy metals like zinc, like copper and, 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 and others, those ones are needed by, by, by the human in certain metabolic processes. But there are others like uh, uh, lead, others like arsenic, others like um, uh, chromium. Those ones are not, are not needed in any quantity for, for the plant or for human beings to consume. So they become of concern. And actually, this lead, arsenic, and chromium are associated with cancer. Now, apart from the fact that we are treated with cancer, if you look at um, um, heavy metal like copper, you see what makes it heavy in this is that it is, it is inorganic. And when it accumulates in the body, it stays there because it is not biodegradable. It, the body system cannot act on it to, to sort of biodegrade it. So it sits in there. For instance, when it comes to copper, copper, copper is supposed to be regulated in the human body um, so that, so that um, we have 
um, we don't have to get concerned with the copper. But copper stays in the body and it accumulates and it leads to a disease called wasting disease. Now, wasting disease is very much associated with copper, which is called a copper disease. And it's associated with, trem with tremors in the hand, tremors in the affected human body. You can take a look at it um, later. Then, when it comes to issues like arsenic, the, the International Agency for Research on Cancer actually talks about arsenic as part of the first 10 toxic elements response for causing cancer. Now, arsenic is also associated with um, what is called Burundi ulcer. But, 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 but then the literature is not, is not directly trying to link arsenic to that. Indeed, the arsenic, that was the Burundi ulcer. But um, in, interestingly, the literature has found that where, where Burundi ulcer is endemic, arsenic pollution is also um, prominent. Medical doctor and toxicologist Dr. Bright Boafobwama also revealed that it could take between 10 to 15 years to restore Ghana's water bodies polluted by illegal mining activities. This issue, I don't want to sound nihilistic anyway, but um, I think um, we've gone far than what we are supposed to do. Because what I think is now these sites, currently we are dealing with emerging contaminants in the world that we are trying to fight. So issues like Galamse, this heavy metal should be legacy. I mean, it should be things of the past. But if you are dealing with these issues now, then it means that we are way like years back of protecting our environment. Yeah, so talking about the various um, issues dealing with these um, possible um, heavy metals, we are looking at human health, we are looking at animal health and the environment. So there's this uh, one health paradigm where we kind of put everything together because you cannot separate human health from animal health. Now, looking at one industry that I foresee having a big issue is the pharmaceutical industry. Because in Ghana, I know um, most of these industries, especially when it comes to the infusions that we use in the hospitals, they need this ultra pure water. And having these heavy metals in them, the treatment is not that easy. And it's very, very expensive. Now, if they are supposed to import water from um, foreign countries, then it means it's going to cost a lot to actually buy these infusions. And it means it's going to eventually affect human health. Now, one other area where we have been looked at is the issue of antimicrobial resistance. So currently, most of the antibiotics are not responding because normally it's due to poor use of um, antibiotics or prescriptions. But it's been shown that these heavy metals also induce antimicrobial resistance. So we are not really dealing with a very simple issue at hand. And even if we should look at how to remediate or restore the water bodies. I think even if we should start now, it's going to take somewhere between 10 to 15 years to kind of do this. And I know there are some water bodies that cannot be restored. Um, others will have to be just closed, possibly not used for drinking or for farming or for any activity at all. So I think what we should do is possibly now just be able to prevent what is going on and protect the ones that have not been impacted upon. Let's get into our election headquarters and the NDC presidential candidate John Dramani Mahama has challenged NPP flag bearer Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia to provide school furniture for over 1 million basic school pupils currently without proper seating. During his tour of the Upper West region, John Romani Mahama said Vice President Baumia, who previously criticized the government from the opposition, now appears to ignore the plight of these students despite having the power to assist them. Today, 1.3 million basic school children in Ghana have no furniture to donate that furniture. He can take it from the budget and buy furniture for those children. Why is he not doing so?
We will try to reconnect with my colleague on ground, Max Olagwagba, bringing us more details. But still in the election headquarters, former minority leader and NP for Tamale South, Haruna Idrisu, has stated that his side of the House in Parliament intends to invoke Article 94G of the Constitution to compel four of their colleagues from the majority side to vacate their seats as members of the House after they all declare to seek re-election as independent candidates. On Tuesday, the Parliament of Ghana will reconvene. And when it reconvenes, I am very certain that Parliament and Ghana will go through a major constitutional test. And that constitutional test is that the NDC minority must become the majority from Wednesday next week. I assume, and this must happen if there is constitutional and legal proprietary in Ghana. Because any nuanced interpretation of Article 97 provides that if a member of parliament on a political party ticket like MPP defects and fail to be independent, that MP ceases to be member of parliament. And if an independent member of parliament, by virtue of the provision of Article 97, sub clause G, an independent joins a political party, that independent loses constitutional recognition and does not belong to parliament. And even if an NDC candidate, MP, defects to become an independent, he ceases to be a member of parliament. Therefore, we will invoke the speaker's proper and true interpretation of Article 97 by our standing order. Deputy Minister of Energy Colin Saduma Kumensa says the government has embarked on policy interventions aimed at a clean and more sustainable energy transition to prepare the country for the fourth industrial revolution. Speaking at the Ghana Science Association Bino Workshop in Sunyani, the minister says an effective collaboration with academia and industry will further shape government policies to achieve the energy transition objectives. Precious Semevo has more in this report. The 19th Biennial Workshop of the Ghana Science Association at the University of Energy and Natural Resources in Sunyai brought together researchers, policy makers and industry players among others committed to transforming the energy landscape. The day's brainstorming workshop on the theme, Innovative, Affordable and Sustainable Energy Supply in Ghana for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, aims to find solutions to the major energy sector challenges and propel sustainable growth and development. The President, Professor Gideon Kofi Helegbe, envisaged the impact of strategic investment in the sector. Solar, and um, if you do that investment, and I talk of the government, I think it will save us a lot and um, like these SMEs, uh, the hairdressers, the barbers, they can shift to those ones and it will help them be really um, in the business because sometimes with this talent you are having with Doom Saw or Doom CC, you realize that you are doing your work and then the light goes off. Of the solar, if you use it very well, it can save them. He says they are ready to help make meaningful tweaks to the energy transition policies that will also inure to the benefit of policymakers. To bring the policymakers and the politicians on board, it looks like um, the researchers must now look look at the interests of these politicians. I mean, take it or leave it, they play a critical role. So when we are doing this uh, proposal or research, we need to look at it in the way that in this thing I'm going to do, how will it translate into votes? When they see that in there, they give all the push. We need them, and they need us. When we take it in a way to translate into their votes, they'll make an impact. 
and they will benefit. Deputy Minister of Energy Collins Aduma Kumensa says the government is ensuring the transition doesn't worsen existing social inequalities. He says they will continue to work with stakeholders for a clean and sustainable energy transition. Electric mobility policy and the removal of import tax on commercial electric vehicles is another milestone achieved by the government to create the enabling environment to increase the penetration of electric vehicles in Ghana to meet our climate goals which reduce economic burden to Ghanaians. For Ghana and Africa to succeed in industrial growth, reliable and cheap energy is required. And the discussion today to address the synergy between academia, policy makers and industry fits well. We need to collaborate further with academia and industry to better shape our policies to fit into the fourth industrial revolution. Precious Summer for Joy News, Sumiai. Now, despite successes chalked in the area of girl-child education, girls continue to face hurdles in accessing fields in technical and vocational education and training, that is TVET. Deputy Director General, Management Services of Ghana TV Services, Lili Jima, says these challenges threaten a brighter future for girls. She spoke at an international day of the girl event at Adan Technical Institute in Adan East District. Kwame Yanka was there for us in our reports. The International Day of the Girl on the theme, Girls' Vision of the Future, Better Prospect in TVET, highlighted immense potential of the sector on national development. Stakeholders, including United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, FAWI, Campaign for Female Education, Comfort, British Council, and other partners, do admit there is an uphill task in ensuring girls pursue their dreams in TVET. Speaking at the event, Deputy Director General, Management Services of Ghana TV Service, Lili Jima, representing the Director General, shares the need to get girls into TV. We stand firm in the belief that every girl, regardless of background, has the right to dream, learn, and excel in any area she chooses. TVET has proven to be a powerful catalyst for economic independence, innovation, and sustainable development. It equips individuals with practical, hands-on skills that are vital to the industries of tomorrow. For girls, TVET is not just about acquiring a trade, it is about reshaping their future. It gives them the tools to break into fields once dominated by men to become role models for the next generation and to drive economic and social transformation within their communities. Director of Girls Education Unit, Ghana Education Service, Gifty Siedu, representing the Director General of the service, called for close collaboration to help girls into TVET. These activities will help to dispel myths and misconceptions and to highlight the numerous benefits of TVET for girls. As we celebrate the International Day of the Girl 2024, let us reaffirm our commitment to promoting gender equality and empowering our girls through education and skill development. I therefore call upon all stakeholders guarded, especially parent teachers, community leaders, and policymakers to join hands in creating a supportive and inclusive environment for our girls. Keynote speaker, Adan is District Director of National Commission for Civic Education for Sina Bleusi, challenged girls to take up leadership roles. She represented the District Chief Executive of the area. We must also embrace leadership. Girls are not just the leaders of tomorrow. We are the leaders of today. We can make it. Let us strive to create spaces where girls can lead. Let us encourage one another to take on leadership roles in schools, clubs, and organizations. Together, we can cultivate a generation of confident young women who are 
unafraid to take charge and make decisions that shape their futures. Senior Program Manager for Comfort Ghana, Dana Lugutia, says her outfit has supported over 3,000 girls into TVET since 2019. Meanwhile, National Coordinator for Fawe Ghana, Richard Amwini, says 600 girls and boys will be supported into TVET tertiary education. Apart from Adana Technical Institute, other basic schools took part in the event. The Ghana Free Zones Authority has taken an active role in promoting women's health in the Ghana East constituency by providing free breast cancer screening throughout the month of October. This initiative forms part of the authority's ongoing commitment to corporate social responsibility, focusing on creating awareness and fostering early detection of breast cancer, particularly during Breast Cancer Awareness Month. There's more in this report. Dozens of women are expected to benefit from this life-saving service, which is designed to offer both education and medical screening. CEO of Ghana Free Zones Authority, Michael Quay Jr., emphasized the importance of regular screening in reducing breast cancer mortality. Dr. Selom. Yes, uh, so today, what we really purposely did was to start the breast cancer screening process. Um, the Ghana Fusions Authority are uh, into CSR for Health. Apologies for that bad quality of sound. We'll bring you that back uh, in a subsequent bulletin. But moving on, Member of Parliament for the Nabdam constituency of the Upper East Region, Dr. Mark Kert Nawani, has spearheaded free surgical operations for over 200 men and boys suffering from hernia and hydrocells in the area. Now, the surgeries have been conducted every year since 2017 to help address a widespread health issue in the constituency that has been hindering the productivity of affected men for years. Our correspondent, Albert Sorry, has more. Occurs when parts of an integral organ, like the intestine, bulges through a weakened area in the muscle or tissue that normally holds it in place. And a hydrocell is a fluid-filled sac that forms around the testicle causing swelling in the scrotum. The member of parliament for the Nabdam constituency, Mark Ket Nawani, a medical doctor, says the two conditions are widespread in his constituency. In the London area, and for that matter, the Upper East, there's a high incidence of kidneys and heart cells. It could be because of uh, their, uh, their work, the farming activities, and other, other ways that involve the use of the abdominal muscles, etc. That is the cause of this. So we are now having a general approach in the Bonaboto area. See how best we can reduce this problem. Dr. Nawani, since he became the MP for the Nabdam constituency in 2017, has been conducting free surgeries every year for persons with hernias or hydrocells. This year, along with his team of medical doctors, he has again taken the initiative to provide this essential medical service to his constituents. Over 200 hernia and hydrocell operations were performed. The condition, he said, was prevalent among men and boys in Nabdam and had significant implications for their well-being and ability to contribute significantly to their communities. And this is affecting productivity. That is the, the, their family activity goes down. Our fathers and mothers are not able to do their family well because of this sickness. 
you know, it's a sickness. When you are working, it can come and you have to stop working. Their lifestyle is the cause of the hernia. It's related to their economic activity. They have to carry things. They have to lift things. They have to farm. Uh, the miserable work has to go on. Uh, for those who are prone to it, you advise them to not to be lifting heavy things. But to say that they shouldn't work, I believe that it, it, it's mean more than that. Uh, they, they have to work and make a living. Those who benefited from the surgeries were still in recovery at the time of our visit. So we caught up with some of their relatives who said the surgeries had brought them a lot of relief. You notice that this person is suffering hernia. If you see such a, a person, you will see him growing what? Lean. But immediately they did the operation. So they are now looking strong. Dr. Mark Ket Nawani says he is determined to provide community-driven leadership for the people of Nabdam and has promised to continue to give these free surgeries every year along with other essential medical services. For Joy News, Albert Sorry, Sakoti, Nabdam District. Let's do some other stories now. Apostle James Tetenati. A once vibrant man of God now finds himself bedridden, battling a severe case of prostate enlargement that has left him unable to walk. Months ago, Joy News brought the story to light, sparking an outpouring of support that allowed him to undergo critical tests at Kolobutichin Hospital. Now, doctors say immediate surgery is his only hope to walk again. However, the cost of almost 70,000 Ghana cities remain a significant barrier. Here's more. James Tete Nati, once the pillar of his family, known for his steadfast faith and dedication, has seen his life take a heartbreaking turn. For over a year, pain and discomfort have become his ruthless companions. My legs is burning, burning me, seriously, and my palm oh, is crumbling like you know, Gary, there's Gary in my, and I can't wake up myself. If I'm trying to wake up, they will help me to lift myself. I can't go to toilet myself. If I want to urinate now, I have to put a chamber pot under me. So it's even on the, the table before I can urinate. If there's, no, so if there's nobody here, I will just urinate. Months ago, Apostle Nate's story talked the hearts of many. When Joy News shared his plight, the outpouring of support was nothing short of overwhelming. Generous donations flowed in, making it possible for him to finally seek the medical care he so desperately needed at the Kolibutijan Hospital. There, he endured a series of tests, each more costly than the last, but at long last, Doctors have delivered a complete diagnosis, bringing some clarity to his long-lost battle. He had been battling a severe case of prostate enlargement, but the reality was far worse than anyone anticipated. The condition had advanced, wreaking havoc on his nervous system and disrupting the delicate flow of nerve impulses from his brain through his spinal cord to his legs. The result, he had lost his ability to walk. Doctors explained that immediate surgery was his only hope. The damage caused by the prostate enlargement had spread so extensively that his neck and lower backbones were in desperate need of surgical intervention. Without these procedures, his chances of ever walking again were slim. Even with the surgeries, the battle wouldn't end there. His prostate condition would require ongoing management with medication, regular tests, and continual treatments. The cost of these critical surgeries and ongoing treatments hovered near 70,000 Ghana cities, an overwhelming sum far beyond Apostle Nate's reach. Yet, this amount represented his only hope of walking again and reclaiming a semblance of the life he once knew. 
Once more, Apostle Nati found himself leaning on the compassion and generosity of Ghanaians, hoping that their kindness will provide the lifeline he so desperately needed. As of now, all that I need is financial support for my treatment. Because of this sickness, I've sold my own car. You see things that I've sold to treat myself. Let's take a quick break. We will return with more news stories. Welcome back. You're still watching Joy News Room with me, Sweetie Abochi. Now, NDC presidential candidate John Dromani Mahama, like I said earlier, has challenged NPP flag bearer Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia to provide school furniture for over 1 million basic school pupils who are currently without proper seating. And during his tour of the Upper West Region, John Mahama said that Vice President Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia, who previously criticized the government from the opposition, now appears to ignore the plight of these students, despite having the power to assist them. Here's that story. Running mate Mahmoud Baumia, when he was running mate to Akufado, he used to come and roam in Upper West here and look for schools where there was no furniture and see children sitting on stones. And he would take pictures and go and say, I visited this school and they didn't have furniture. NDC has failed to give him furniture. Today, 1.3 million basic school children have no furniture. During the NDC time, he will visit and he will donate furniture to the school. Today, 1.3 million basic school children in Ghana have no furniture. And yet, he is in charge of the budget today. He doesn't even need to use his own pocket money to donate that furniture. He can take it from the budget and buy furniture for those children. Why is he not doing so? I challenge him to visit the schools in Upper West, that do not have furniture, and he should provide them with furniture like he was doing when he was in opposition. And it's day two of the um, presidential candidate John Dramani Mahama in the Upper West region, and our colleague Max Solagbagba is traveling with the NDC presidential candidates, and he joins us now. Max Sol, it is day two of the tour. What can you report? Well, this is the second place where the NDC presidential candidate just visited. So he's here at Fusi and he's addressing um, the crowd. Key among the things he's been talking about is that two things that play out in this year's elections. Uh, he mentioned the economy. He says the economy will be an important part of this year's election. He also talks about um, employment, which he says will play you know, a key role um, in this year's um, election. He's here in Fusi right now, and he's addressing um, the crowd. So you can just listen to him and hear what he's been saying. was moving from 14 to 15 to 16 to 17. We were not servicing any day. And so even in a situation where we are not servicing debt, the city continues to lose value to the dollar and other international currencies. That is the situation in which MPP has managed this country. And that is why they must go into opposition. That is why the elephant must go into the bush. So that NDC can come back and repair the mess that they have created. Eight years. You inherited a very promising economy. Two new oil wells, additional oil production of 100,000 barrels a day. You inherited all the funds, stabilization fund, sinking fund, Ghana infrastructure fund, energy sector levy, all those things you inherited. And all you needed to do was to build on what the NDC had done to create a better life for Ghanaians. But no, that was not your intention. Your intention was to plunder this country and take the opportunities of the country for only a few family and friends. And so as we are all complaining, 
there are few of them who are very happy because they benefited over the last eight years. Those who are associated with the system have benefited. Their party Aparachiki have benefited. Their DCs have benefited. Because when you send fertilizer to them to give to the farmers, they divert the fertilizer for themselves. So when the rest of Ghanaians are crying and suffering, you can be sure that these ones do be laughing and enjoying themselves. But they are the minority. We, those who are suffering, are the majority. And that is why we say that NDC is on a rescue mission. Because we need to rescue our country back from them. They have done enough damage. They have sent this country 10 years back from what they inherited in 2017. And so we say enough is enough. It is time for them to go and reflect on the harm that they have caused to the Ghanaian people and give way for more experienced, better managers of the country and the economy to take over and make things better for Ghanaians. And that is what is going to happen on 7th December 2024. This election is about your future. And I look at the faces of these young people. Many of you are holding mobile phones and recording me. I mean, this election is about your future. Good one. It's about your future. I have young children like you, Sharaf and all of them, they are my children. I care about their future. In some years' time, myself and my generation will be dead and gone. And we will hand over this country to you. But what have they left you? They left you with a huge debt that they will be dead and gone and you will be paying. They will not be paying, but they've spent the money today. And so, they've done enough damage, let them go. We cannot afford to have MPP continue in government. Because if we do that, it will reward mismanagement. It will reward impunity. It will reward thievery. It will reward dishonesty. It will reward daylight robbery. And so they've done enough. Let them go. And let us come and recover what is left and put it together. Pick up Ghana. Ghana is on the floor. Kwame Nkrumah's Ghana, the black star of Africa. Today is the laughing stock of Africa. We feel ashamed when we meet our other colleagues because they wonder what happened to Ghana. You have always showed the way. All other African countries come and learn from Ghana because we have always led the way. Today, all those countries have overtaken us. Even Cote d'Ivoire, which used to be number three. Ghana was always number two. Nigeria was number one. Largest economy in West Africa. Ghana, number two. Cote d'Ivoire, number three. Today, Cote d'Ivoire is number two. We are number three. From 2022, they overtook us under Baumia and Nana Akufuado. Under Baumia and Nana Akufuado. In 2016, when I was president, they said somebody was the economic messiah. He was coming to change Ghana's economy and move the economy to the next level. The videos are all there. And you see the videos, you see them talking themselves. Nana Kufado was saying, in, uh, 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 talking about the currency. And if you remember that video, he says, in President Kufo's time, one dollar equal to one city. In Mills Mahama time, one dollar equals to two cities. You remember that video? 
and that because of that, myself and Professor Mills should resign. One dollar to two cities. Because of that, Mills and I. Now let's do some national science and math quiz stories now because they may be first timers but they are unfazed to face the stormy and torturous contest of the 2024 edition of the National Science and Math Quiz. Now, through though greenhorns, the eight debutants are brimming with confidence, ready to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with seasoned schools. Jacqueline Ansamayabwa reports from the University of Cape Coast, where the next couple of weeks will see some of the country's finest brains battle for academic supremacy. For the first time in over three decades, the 2024 edition of the National Science and Math Peace Contest is welcoming 157 schools with eight new entrants in the national tournament. Three private schools and five public schools are stepping into the NSMQ arena for the very first time, hoping to make their mark on Ghana's biggest academic stage. Adamomase SHS, Kofia J SHS, Presby SHS Bumpata, Sewenyako SHS and Sirigu SHS are the new public schools in the mix. Expectations are high as these fresh faces gear up to challenge Ghana's top academic contenders without breaking a sweat. Oh, to be honest, kind of tense, but also some kind of delight in it after all. We are here for experience. We are here for experience. Yeah. Yeah. I see. Being our first and the expectation is great. No matter how the reception, we're never going to pick last. We are going to win. We shall not go to or a Jacobo to any loss. We are winning. Always the best. So when you are never disappoint. So we live with our shoulders high. On the private school side, our Lady of Grace Senior High School, Bright SHS, and Ghana Lebanon Islamic SHS are entering the competition with confidence and excitement. Well, we are meeting Ashama Senior High and Agri Memorial. Oh, it's cool for us. We can finish them. Can finish the, can finish the simple crap. Looking at the original championship and then other competitions they've been in, we see that they're very good, but then we're also good. We are equally good. So we can counter them. We've done enough. We've done enough to face whichever school that's coming to face us. We are ready to fight. So Tepa Second College, we are ready to meet them. Their inclusion is shaking up the competition, making this year's National Science and Math Quiz one to watch closely. With the stage set and these debutants fired up, the 2024 edition of the National Science and Math Quiz promises surprises at every turn. Now, Joy Prime's culinary extravaganza, Big Chef Tertiary, has seen contestants show up weekly in the kitchen to impress the judges. After three weeks, the remaining seven schools are charged and ready to battle it out in the kitchen for the Star School of the Day title. They take on the Healing Meal Challenge today at 5 p.m. And here's what the contestants have to say. Hello, this is Abel Kinjian from Full Technical University. Sally Fushir Kato from Full Technical University. And there is a saying that actions speak louder than words. You are not going to talk too much. All we need is your food. Please vote for us on the short code. Star 711, star 60, number 8. Hello, lovely viewers. I'm the person of Baraka from Bogotano Technical University. And I'm Mabel from Bogotano Technical University. Um, this week, you should expect the best and nothing but the best. And vote star 711, star 60, hash number 2. We represent Tamale Technical Tomorrow is going to be an eviction show, and all we simply want to say is just expect something simple and normal. To keep us in the competition, you can dial the shop code star 711 star 60 hash and select number 3, Tamale Technical University. Hi, my name is Kalina from Kofodio Technical University, and this is Kevin Sinajani Wads and Joshua from Kofodio Technical University. Expect something simple and catchy for us tomorrow. Just make sure to vote. Vote to the short school star seven one one star six zero hash number nine on the list. Yes, I can hide this. Vote as many as you can. Hello, viewers. I'm in another circle. I'm Isaac Kobabi. We are from Kumasi Technical University. Our show tomorrow. We are keen on you guys to uh, expect nothing but explicit and delicious dishes. Yeah. 
then you now you go to the short code star, star seven one one star six zero patch number six. So we are going to do this for the remainder. This is just the first exercise. So we will go to the first exercise. Some of you are under addition. We are pleading to support us with the group by dialing star seven one one star six zero hash number seven. Do tune in at 5 p.m. to Joy Prime to enjoy this contest. And that's how we're wrapping up the bulletin. But for more news, log on to myjoyonline.com where you find the latest updates on some of the stories that we brought you thus far. Well, we have the updates from the president saying your advocacy for state environment has paid off. President Akufuado to Ochin Hini. We also have Haruna Idrisu who wants majority MPs to vacate seats while contesting re-election as independent candidates. There are so many other stories there, including the National Science and Maths quiz as eight first-timers are ready to face off squarely with seasoned schools. My name is Sweetie Abwachi. Many thanks for your time. It's bye for now.